the last presentation I'll do myself. Um, I will be talking about unifying power policies and this presentation doesn't really give many answers but uh, it's, it's been inspired by, uh, by the reply that we got from Ingo some time back uh, about all these patches that we've been doing related to power efficient scheduling. Um, and it didn't seem, well, what he was requesting, I think, was basically to sort of unify everything and, and actually come up with something that, that solves all the problems or at least address them. Um, so let me first quickly go over what, what we currently have in, in the kernel. We have some uh, power management frameworks. We have CPU frag and we have CPU idle. And then we have the scheduler, which is not really power aware at the moment. In, uh, in frequency scaling in CPU frag, we have a generic governor and we have a platform specific driver. Um, most of the governors decides on the frequency based on sort of overall CPU load. Um, and the CPU load is sort of a time average, not uh, really accurate compared to what we have in the scheduler right now. Um, in CPU idle, we again have a generic governor and we have a platform specific driver. And again, we don't really use the, uh, the, the scheduler information just like Tuka and Daniel uh, were talking about earlier. And then we have the scheduler, which doesn't really know anything about power topology or, or how to actually schedule best for, for power consumption. Uh, but it actually determines where tasks are running. So we have an entity that can decide we're going to put work on this CPU, but we don't know if it's power efficient or not. And then we have some framework that tries to adjust frequencies and, and select the best idle states depending on what the scheduler has chosen. Um, so the idea is may maybe we can do better if we integrate scheduling and the, 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 the um, frequency scaling and um, idle state selection uh, policies. So this is a very crude diagram trying to explain how, how it works at the moment. Uh, we have the scheduler in the past before Alex Xi's patches were mainlined. Um, load balancing decisions were basically driven by how many tasks do I have on each CPU. Uh, the scheduler would just try to, to even out the number of tasks so you would have one on each or two on each or the closest that you can get. Um, at the same time, the CPU frag would look at the load on, of the CPU and try to adjust the, uh, the frequency such that the load would be some number. I think some of the governors will try to, to get you to like 80 or 90 percent load. Um, so it will basically just lower the frequency until you get that load. Um, that is sort of interesting because with the latest changes that went then in 3.11 with the track load based load balancing, um, we actually changed the load of the CPU by changing the frequency. because. The task load now depends on how much time a, CPU, a task was, was actually running. We can increase the load of a task by lowering the frequency. So if CPU frag decides to lower the frequency, the, the task will appear bigger. And that can actually trigger the scheduler to think this CPU is overloaded and we should move tasks away. So you sort of have a, a negative loop where you can actually end up emptying a CPU of tasks because CPU frag is lowering the frequency, which makes the task appear bigger and the CPU appear more loaded, and the load balancer in the scheduler will move tasks away, which is clearly not ideal. Um, at the same time, we have CPU idle that is just called from the scheduler, and it will do its best to try to figure out which, uh, which C state it should choose. Um, and there's not much coordination there. But is it really a problem? Um, there is this negative feedback between the scheduler and, and the CPU frag at the moment, which is clearly not ideal. But there are also other things that are sort of missing that could really help us. Um, for example, the, a missing unified policy makes it really difficult for us to do, do packing very efficiently. Uh, 
Vincent was talking about how to do packing, but if we have very aggressive frequency scaling at the same time, it's difficult to actually pack effectively because if you don't know how fast your CPU is running, how do you know how many tasks you can put on it? Let's say it was running at a low frequency. Um, you have a question? I'm not saying it needs to know exactly what frequency performance state we're running at. We need to know if we're running, if, if what we're seeing right now, well, right now the scheduler can only see what load we have right now. It doesn't know which performance state we're running at. So you may end up having the scheduler moving tasks to other CPUs because they think it's full. So you're suggesting that we're just something like CPU power from CPU frac and that way get the... Sorry. So the idea is that to create the feedback from CPU frac back to the scheduler, we can either add a callback um, so that the scheduler can get information from CPU frac or we can let CPU frac scale CPU power, which is currently used to represent the compute capacity of the CPU based on, on, uh, on the current frequency. Yes, so I, I don't know how, if it would actually work to do it this way. Or maybe we could just do it more abstract and just have an interface. Exactly. So. Yes. I think that's actually two separate problems. The one problem is that the track load is affected by frequency scaling. Mm -hmm. It's actually also affected by which CPU you're running on if you're running on Big Little because... If you do it with power, if you do it with power, Big Little or, or, or the scaling the same thing. Yes. You well, you can do it as a combined solution, I guess. but. I still think that to accommodate for Intel's need, it might be better to have a more abstract interface where you just have a way of asking the, the platform, uh, am I running at the highest frequency right now? Or can I expect that you can run any faster or not? If you cannot, then I need to put tasks on another CPU. If you can, then leave more tasks on the CPU and, and it will adjust. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so, well, back to things that would be nice to have. There is, uh, in general, power topology awareness, which was discussed earlier by both Manson and by, by Daniel. Um, which is not there right now, and so I already proposed to add an extra flag to, to indicate uh, um, power domains. Maybe that's not enough um, going forward. Maybe we need more information. One thing that would be very interesting for, 
for ARM for Big Little is how can we set, how can we actually tune the, uh, the scheduling policy for each of the big and little domains. You may want to do packing in one domain and you may want to do spreading in another domain. Um, so there are some things to, to, to think about there. Um, so my wish list is really that, that we fix this problem that we just talked about. Uh, I call that scale invariant load. We need a load which, where we can actually compare load between CPUs independent of what frequency they're running at and also what type of core it is. Um, I believe we can use CPU power as you suggest. We should just be aware that the range of CPU power will be huge if we both try to encode the, uh, the um, microarchitecture performance difference and the uh, I just mean if you want to factor in big little and frequency scaling, you may end up having CPU power change by range a factor of 10 or something. Yeah. Um, but if we do that, then we need to revisit some of the, uh, the logic in the load balancer, in the load balance code, because it does funny math like taking the CPU power and divide it by 1024 to figure out how many times you want. Yeah, a unit of, of a task. So that, that's just a that's like saying, so run, the reason we do that here is so that when you want to compare A to B, yes. you want a ratio between A and B that's consistent if you're working on the C. So we always unitize, we always normalize the task, and that's why we divide that into four. Because that way, A to unit of B to B to unit of B to C to unit of B to all of those comparisons. Like if you just did A to B, you normalize the task. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Um, now, um, if your CPU power is going to a very low value. When you are computing the number in the load balance, you are trying. We get how many number we have, how many CPU number we have in a in a group, and how many tasks can be can run on that. And when you go below some value and above, you have some ghost CPU can can appear. So Peter, I've pushed the patch to solve that. But there, you can also have some real CPU can that can disappear because their capacity is too small, and the addition make that. In a group of four or six core, you will be seeing just an equivalent of two normal core. So we need also to, have a, to find a, a solution for that. Be sure that you, you have the right number of real core, whatever the CPU capacity is. Yeah. So, if I understand it correctly, the, the scaling you want to do, would you include that in the track load of the task? So every contribution you make, every time you update the track load, you would, you would factor in what the frequency was on, on that CPU? I would suggest just storing it at a single power, wherever it was happening to run. And then if you want to run it, if you want to evaluate that value somewhere else or migrate it, you renormalize it at the new power. And if you migrate it, you store the renormalization and make that the power you're storing it at. But can you read? Rescale, yeah. Yeah. No. This is exactly what we mentioned like five minutes ago. This is what we were saying like a few minutes ago. Right. So, I, I, as I was saying, then there's two things we can. Well, there's two things we can do. One is uh, try to do renormalization based on what we observe historically. Two, probably easier, is the Intel governors are super aggressive at going to max power anyway. 
so it's less of a factor there. Like on Intel, you, you, you normally, there's only like three bins you end up seeing. Uh, you typically see, uh, you see the, on, on the new CPUs, you see the turbo bin, if you're the only one in the package, and that's about 30 to 40% faster. You'll see the max frec bin, and you'll see a third one, which is somewhere in between zero and, and the max, but it's really aggressive at going to max frec. Where the, uh, sorry? Are you talking about, is this predating Aryan's work? Because I believe Aryan's work is pretty aggressive about always going to max. Because he, he, because Aryan's work really favors race to idle. And race to idle says run in max. I, I don't know the current state of your driver. I'm just saying, at least Aryan's been working on that and he's been working strongly on race to idle. I mean, I guess the other issue is that you can't get that information from the Intel because you can do it by all the But, uh, but uh, I, I completely agree with you. I'm just also saying from the Halem on, they're really aggressive at Mac running in the max. So we, there's less time, where, like the ARM case, when we're running in a sub-maximal state. I, I, I'm not seeing why... Right, right, but, but so there's two problems, right? One is the CPU picks, you make a recommendation to the CPU and it picks, a value, it picks a state up to your recommendation behind your back, right? So we know the recommendation we're making. That's easy. We can plug that into the scheduler. What I'm saying is we can take advantage of the fact that the current hardware governor is very aggressive at typically running at the reservation, you, at the limit you provide. So given that, we don't have to worry about, as much about renormalizing because we can use the suggested the limit we suggested as the target because we know that the CPU is really aggressive at running that. On the ARM chips, that's less true because they're more aggressive at saying we're going to do it in software and explicitly specify a lower limit. And so all I'm saying is the order normal, like, because where Intel is doing it behind our back, we can use the limit we've given them because they're pretty aggressive at running at that limit. And I'm saying that's probably a reasonable first approximation. to the wish list. Um, well, if we implement this load scaling, it would help, it would help us do packing better. Um, and it would also help us for, uh, for load balancing for big like systems. Because the problem we have right now is if we move a task from a little CPU to a big CPU, because it's been running slower on a little CPU, it appears bigger. And when we move it over, it will appear smaller because it's basically running faster. So it's, it's, it's just the, uh, the, the frequency scaling problem um, multiplied by, by the microarchitecture difference. Um, the interesting thing here is because it's microarchitecture difference, then it's just not a constant scaling factor you have between the, the big and the little CPU. It, it actually varies. Um, the other thing, Topology awareness, where I mean power topology awareness. We've already discussed that earlier. We have one flag um, proposed by uh, Vincent. Um, I'm not sure if we want to add more, more flags or if, if we actually want to, to add all this information into, into the existing uh, scheduled domain hierarchy. 
and, and how we want to do that. Um, some platforms might have some, some um, interesting topology information that is very specific to that platform. Should that really go into, into generic data structures or should we, should we try to let, the, let that live in some, uh, in some driver? Um, I don't know how really to, to, to structure that. Um, I think the next slide I, I have here, I tried to summarize all the changes that I, I, I see need, that I, I think are needed. So on the, um, on the left side, we have the scheduler. Right now, we have a scheduler main hierarchy. It's a generic topology representation. Um, we need some more generic information in there if you want to do packing, for example. Um, the load balancing algorithms in the scheduler, we need to look at how we actually do packing. We have seen patches from uh, Matsang, we have seen patches from, uh, from Alex Xi trying both to do packing in different ways. None of them have been really, well, there's been discussions around them, but nobody, there's been problems with, with, with both of them. Um, there is the, uh, the load tracking, why we need scale invariance, as we just discussed. Um, it came up in one of the discussions on LKML that, <clears throat> that um, some were interested in actually having a hint coming from the scheduler about what, what sort of task is being scheduled so we can hint the hardware. But now we're running something really important. Please consider this CPU uh, more favorable when, when, you, when you select frequencies. Um, that actually came from, uh, came from Intel um, related to, uh, to Turbo Boost. Um, so how, how can we structure this whole thing and make sure that, that everybody can, can, can get what they want? Um, so one way to do it would be to have this, have an abstract interface where you can query your, your platform driver about can I run faster and, and information like that. Um, and also we need a way to make sure that you can actually tune policies for, for, for your platform. The situation is right now that, that for, for Intel, for example, we have the P-state driver, which sort of lifts a bit on its own. Uh, it doesn't use uh, the existing frameworks very much, as far as I know. I just had a quick look at it. And if I understand the, 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 the messages coming from Intel correctly, they, they're actually working on something that is even more detached from, uh, from the existing frameworks. So should we instead have a structure where we actually have a platform driver where you can do pretty much what you want and just have a very high level interface between the scheduler and, and that platform driver and then assist the platform driver with some library of, of helper functions like the existing uh, governor policies we have from CPU idle and CPU frag so the driver can choose to use them if it wants to or you can implement your own like Intel has done in the P-state driver. Hello? Hello? Okay. Uh, the important tasks group is actually something that hasn't been mentioned at all today, but I think it's kind of important because one of the approximations you were talking about using was running, was packing short running tasks on the little CPU, which is nice except when those short running tasks are foreground tasks. Yes. So, it, so that, that's it's, actually, it's, it's actually nice to see that because I don't think any of the other slides have mentioned uh, that from inter an interactivity point of view. Yes. Um, well, it's just a loser deer that came from a discussion with Arjun um, where he was sort of hinting maybe we can have a very abstract interface like, like you proposed before, like where we can just ask the platform, can you run any faster or not? And at the same time, he would like a hint where we could say, now I'm going to schedule something important um, and then firmware, whatever you have, can actually favor that CPU more. So if, if you have something which is important and you have a, a constrained power budget, energy budget, something, you, you, you can actually make the CPU running something important have, have access to more it's energy, run faster than the rest. So you sort of give priority in hardware somehow. It's, it's, it's also worth noting that Android actually already arranges its tasks in a yes. way that's compatible with this because 
We're, Android's pretty aggressive about using a foreground background C group so that foreground tasks run sooner. So this hint could apply to the foreground task group. Okay, so you see value in having a, a, a group that, okay. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> my vision or idea is that the, the, the power driver that you would have would be the platform specific bit um, where you would have detailed topology information in it you would have all the, what you have currently in your CPU islands, CPU frag driver, you would have in your power driver as well. That would allow you to coordinate um, P, and C, P state and C state selection. So you could, for example, optimize for turbo boost. Um, at the same time, you would be able to actually use whatever performance monitors you have on your platform. Because you're doing everything inside your platform driver, you're free to do whatever you want. So if you have something on your platform that would help you select a better P state or C state, you can use it. Um, but at the same time, if you don't have it, then let's have a, a library of, of the existing governors that you can just plug in and use. Um, this way, I think it's, it's possible to, to accommodate everybody. But People might disagree. Um, so the overall structure would be that you have a power driver for your platform. If you don't, we can have a legacy driver that would just use the existing governor policies. And that would register with the scheduler. And you would have an abstract interface between the two. How that interface would look exactly like, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I put down. Um, a list of things which could be there, names may change, there are some things that are not optimal here. We could, for example, have this uh, a max capacity request where you can ask the platform driver, are we running at the highest frequency or can we expect the, uh, the platform to actually provide a higher performance so the scheduler can decide whether or not to put more tasks on the CPU or if we should wake up a new one and use that instead. Um, we can give it a hint to increase capacity. On some platforms, um, you may do it all in hardware, so this, this should just be treated as a hint by the driver. For ARM platforms where we, in most cases, don't do anything clever behind the scenes, you can use that and, and select a new frequency. Um, on other platforms, you, might ignore, you may not ignore that and, 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 and do something else. Um, you can also have a decrease capacity uh, request if the scheduler knows now the CPU is not going to do much. Tell the platform driver that this is the case and let the platform driver figure out what to do. Um, we can have this boost hint coming from the scheduler, um, um, coming from the uh, important task C group. Um, another interesting thing would be to, to have a way to curve the platform driver about which CPU would be the best one to wake up. Right now, you, you just pick a random one, more or less, um, if you need an extra CPU. Um, if you have, a, for example, an ARM system with two clusters, and you have um, one CPU, which is idle in one domain, then clearly you should, should pick that so you don't need to power up a whole new domain. Um, and the same thing when, when you actually want to pick a CPU to, to go to sleep. If, you're, if you don't have work enough, enough work for all the CPUs that you currently have awake, why not ask the, the, uh, the platform driver which CPU would be the most efficient one to actually put to sleep. Um, you can easily have a situation where you have one task, <coughs> left, sorry, one CPU left running in a power domain and the other power domain you happen to actually put a, put a CPU to sleep. So instead of having one asleep in one domain and the other one's working and one awake in the other domain, why not just make sure that you move everything into one domain so you can shut down an entire domain. Um, that's something you cannot do at the moment. Um, yeah, we, we need a way to, well, if you do it like I showed before, then idle will also come through the platform driver because the platform driver would be in charge of selecting which, uh, which sleep state that we would be entering. Um, 
and also for the scale load that we uh, we discussed before. You may there's been some discussion whether it's actually a good idea to base the track load on time. Um, there was a proposal that we could actually use performance counters to uh, to figure out the, the track load of a task instead of just using using wall clock time. If we want to do that, that's pr probably something very platform specific. So again, it would make sense to put in a platform driver and have a high level interface. Um, and also the initialization of all the um, the generic power domain, uh, sorry, the sket domain hierarchy with all the flags about how to do things and uh, how to load balance in all the domains is also platform specific. So maybe that should also come from the uh, come from the uh, power driver. That's all. API, it's mainly uh, function-based, mm -hmm. so it means that you will have a callback in the platform driver, so a specific code. Yeah. Uh, in the scheduler, the, the, the use of lock and so on is quite sensitive. How can you ensure that the, platform, the callback of the platform driver will not take a lot of lock, lock or will not mess everything? Uh, how have you planned to solve that? Maybe using a shared, a shared place where everything is independent without any lock would be a, a more comfortable situation, I don't know. My point by yes, just calling callback and callback, it's at the end you don't know what will be done inside the scheduler function, or inside the scheduler context. Yeah, um, I don't have a prototype patch or anything that, that does all of this. Uh, what I'm doing is just that I'm proposing that we can do it this way and we can have all the platform stuff hidden in this, this, this power driver. I'm sure there will be lots of problems actually uh, implementing this. So, so what, what I'm really looking for is, is just, is, is this a variable way to go or is there some fundamental problems and should we look for a different route? I said that doesn't seem fundamentally different from just re requiring that any implementation satisfy an interrupt. You could even mark an interrupt before you called it in debug mode. And most of the cases, I think that covers all the cases you mentioned. I tried to do that in some, some prototype patch that I posted a while ago where I invented some abstract scale where you would have something like the power ranging from something to something and you, you are asking for X amount extra. But I want the, that scale to be very abstract. So I don't want to send a message saying we want uh, 1.2 gigahertz. That, that won't work. It, it's just some, we, we need some abstract quanti quantity saying we, we were expecting to get, I don't know, 50% more work. And then the platform driver would have to translate that into, into, into the, the appropriate power state or performance state, sorry. I mean, if, you, if you're doing load balance, move a task from one CPU to another, then you will probably have some at least some vague idea about how much extra work that is. And that is the information I want to pass on to, 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 the, uh, to the platform driver. If I did. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, this is not set in stone or anything, it's yeah, just, uh, <laughs> yeah, good. I would like also interested in uh, load balancing because uh, the currently we track the vehicles uh, per core or per CPU.
actually, hopefully. Yeah, so um, when you're rebalancing, it's not only the CPU frequency, it's also the idle. Um, if you move a task from one core to another, wake-ups move with that. And uh, currently, we don't update all, uh, all at all the statistics. So that's one of the reasons why it's nicer to have the statistics somewhere other than the governor itself, maybe. And that's why it's nice if the governor was told that this is the expected length. Don't bother trying to figure it out. I've got it figured for you. And uh, scheduler is a nice place because when it moves a task, it knows that now some of the wake-ups, uh, maybe even if you track it per task, then you get the data transferred instantly. So um, if we do it in scheduler, we don't need interface for it. But if we do it somewhere else, we would have to have functions for that as well. Yeah. Getting back to the capacity hint, uh, it would be nice to have the same hint for the get best wake CPU and get best sleep CPU. You may want to provide the platform driver with the knowledge how much power is required so it could have a ch choice of bringing up little CPU or a big one. Same with the get best sleep CPU, you, you say you could cut down on the power and it will turn off the big CPU, starving everyone of, of, of power. So chances are you'll have to spin something up very sh shortly again. So maybe the another way to do it is not to provide a hint to the platform driver, but get the list of available CPUs in the order of reference or in the order of power um, consumption. The same for the sleep. So if I understand correctly, you, you want a list of, of potential candidates instead of just one. Correct. So scheduler can, can pick one. The other way to do it is have the platform driver decide and just give the hint the same way you give the hint to decrease capacity and increase capacity to, to get best wake or get best sleep. Yeah. I think passing a list between the driver and the scheduler might be. Yeah, it's a view mask. Yeah. Okay. More questions? Um, <clears throat> this is basically what I have. Well, um, of course, there should be some interface between the uh, the driver and the library of helper functions. My my initial idea was that, that the library of helper functions would basically be the, the policy bits of the existing uh, CPU idle and CPU frag governors. So if you have a platform where you don't want to do any new stuff, then you could use a generic power driver that would just use the existing policies and, and that would ensure uh, uh, support for existing, existing systems. Well, if, if they can't tell us if we can expect more or less capacity, then it's really hard to do anything inside. Or take, we, we can't really optimize for it. Uh, oh, no, I, I fully understand that. Yeah, well, if, if, if you just know that, 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 that would be a great help because during load balance, then we can then decide, okay, we can't expect more from, uh, from this CPU. We should start thinking about using a, a second CPU to, to take over some of the load. Okay, well, that... Okay, that, that sounds very good because one of the things that came up in the discussion on LKML is how to actually accommodate what, what you already have in, in, your, in your P-state driver. 
and I was hoping that this would be possible for you to use. That might happen very quickly. So on Intel, for example, there was some discussion about using the APERF imperf ratio. And if we use those, we, we can just read them when we need them and apply them. We don't need to track every, every change in, 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 in frequency because they have this, this interesting uh, counter setup. So I think it will actually be quite easy to implement the load scale thing on, on Intel, if I understand correctly. Um, no, we don't need to know every change on Intel because of the way the counters are set up. They just they have one counter which counts at, at a fixed rate. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, and another one which counts at the rate that, that the current frequency is. So, if you just sample what there were sometimes in the past when you last updated and the new update, then and, and when you want to update, then the ratio between the two will reflect everything that happened in in in, in between. So, you don't need to try track every, every frequency change. So it will actually be slightly harder to do that on systems where you don't have those counters. If you update every time you, you, you change your frequency, then you would get something which would be slightly more accurate, I think. But I don't think it will be. Yes. More questions? So yeah, I have a slide on some of the feedback we got from uh, from the first proposal, which was pretty similar to, to this. I've changed a few things based on the, the, the feedback we got from Intel. One of the comments we got um, was that um, we use CPU power to restrict the way the load balancer chooses which CPUs where where to put tasks and we were told that was not really a good idea, but based on the discussion we have had today, it seems that CPU power is really useful for doing that. So maybe we should just go ahead and, and, uh, and use CPU power to guide the, uh, the load balancer. Um, yeah, really. I think I'm going to skip this and just Well, the whole idea behind this proposal I just showed was to try to combine everything that we're working on. Um, because if we just work on them in sort of separation, I think we'll end up having problems merging them uh, in the end. So, yeah, question? Yes? Yes, Thermal. Uh, yeah, I didn't actually put it in there. I have energy monitoring in there, but yeah, Thermal needs to be in there as well. So I think by putting it all together in the platform driver, you can do exactly what you want for your, for your platform. Um, so we don't have to invent interfaces between CPU idle, CPU frag that can actually allow it to pass all the information that you need between those, those frameworks. Um, I haven't been able to imagine any, any other setup where, where you can actually do everything you want for, for, for all platforms.
All right, we have about five minutes left. So this is about what I have. Um, the idea is to try to prototype this. It's not going to be feature complete or anything, but um, we're hoping to, to have some, uh, some more discussions in about a month. Uh, we have ELC and Kernel Summit coming up. And the plan is to try to prototype as much as possible uh, and post it before then uh, to hopefully get the discussion going. Intel P state driver and how it kind of combines the generic governor, the PID governor, I think what you wrote, right, with the uh, underlying Intel specific implementation. And I may have misunderstood, but I kind of had the impression that you didn't really want to see more drivers that combined that approach, that you felt that Intel was, that was kind of a special case in some way. It did, maybe I misunderstood, but... I actually don't mind anyone doing that thing, because I, my personal opinion is that you can't really have a generic uh, thing like CPU frag used to be, and that will match every, every needs of everyone, because Hardware gets more and more complicated, and we need to rely more and more on it. And there may be some features in that hardware, some features in that hardware that are missing from the other, and so we need to take that that into account. So I think, honestly, in the future we'll need to have something more integrated uh, on every platform. So. So, so you're not opposing this, uh, this yeah, idea? Yeah, I am not. I actually like that. Okay. That's very good. More questions? No. All right. Should we, should we just end it here and say thank you, everybody, for showing up? I think it's been really useful. And uh, I'd also like to thank Daniel and Preeti from, uh, well, Daniel from uh, Linaro sitting here, but also Preeti from IBM. She couldn't make it here, but she also helped pulling together this microconference. So, okay. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>